Hey, yo, Peasy. Hey. You know, a lot of people be scared to go through the fire, you know what I'm saying? So the father can purge them from their niggas. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let's come together on this song right here and show everybody that it's, you know, it's really a good thing when the most high purges you. Huh. You know, you still need to do that fire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What you think about that, bro? Yeah, you already know I know what you're talking about. You feel me? I yeah. always do the same thing. Get to the new without purging them old things You might trip and fly without tying your shoestrings You can't break a dollar without making change Steady switching lanes Going through the flames in the morning Can't break fast cause the flesh I'm trying to change Pain? You gon' go through pain Mama had to travail before that baby came Your feelings is gon' suffer Trust is gon' suffer Judged by the wicked Betrayed by ones who love you But faith in no other than the father I hired Cause we learn that he's the truth And every man is a liar We can shy you beside you You can do all things See through all game No pride, no shame Till the day that we reign We gon' learn to long suffer And be thankful for it Yeah, just because I'm Today, I'm going to tell y'all about Meet You Down. Man, that song came out way back in my first year in the truth. Maybe it was my second. But I was fellowshipping with GOCC at the time. Guys in the Christ Church. Meet You Down, that was Karate's eye song, right? And at that time, he was a member of GOCC. Me, I was very much interested in being a member, but, but wasn't, Right? But I was going to fellowship with them. I was, I was rolling out there to fellowship with them like every week. It's about I drive about 45 minutes to an hour from my crib to go fellowship, right? 
I had just put out my second or third song. I don't remember. It was one of the first few songs we put out. So we we headed to Sabbath this particular Saturday, right? And on that day, they play one of our songs. <laughs> People started cheering in the building. <laughs> look at look at man. I, at that moment, I wanted to disappear, man. I I didn't expect that. But that was really the beginning of the music ministry. Well, at the end of that Sabbath gathering, Karatazai came up and told me he makes beats and he raps. I really didn't have a high expectation concerning the music. You know, everybody say they rap, right? <laughs> I was more interested in the fellowship, right? I was on fire, just woke up, yo. You know what I'm saying? So he invited me over to his residence to show me his setup. I get there. And Karate's eyes start showing me his works. And I'm like, this brother talented, yo. He re his beats was industry ready back then. And as the years went by, he, he got better. But back then he was amazing, for real though. So we started working on some songs. And one day Karate's eye hits me up and says he has a new beat with a Texas feel. And he sent it to me. <laughs> look, look, y'all. I immediately responded like, man, you got one. You got one right here, fam. I ain't gonna lie. I was excited. Y'all, I was excited. Look, look, y'all knew that was a hit. Man, look, I knew it. So Karajas, I wanted me to hit a particular artist to hop on that thing. I said, yeah, that brother, that he hot. He hot, he fine. He was well known at the time. And he still is, though. But I think you should check out Quadam Rakar. <laughs> I had been working with Kodam and I, I was a Kodam fan. In fact, I still am. I ain't gonna lie. Kodam, nice, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all know if y'all know who I'm talking about, right? Well, the father, man, he done blessed me to get on a song with some talented individuals, man. And this song wasn't no different. But Karate's I wasn't show, you know. But I guess he respected my gift, so he gave me his trust and told me to hit up Kodam. And yo, the rest is history. Quadam did not disappoint, which I never thought he would. <laughs> Y'all go check both them brothers out. I mean, I really thought I was going to be in GOCC, man. <laughs> Karateza and Quadam was, they was cool. They was a real player. They was a real player. Y'all, I was fresh off the block. And all I had was fire for the father. And I was excited to be around other Israelites on fire for the most high. Coming from similar backgrounds. Nine years, almost 10 years later, it feels good to look back and know that I'm still trucking. And through the hard times, the Father's blessed me, huh? If y'all got any songs y'all want to hear the history on, let us know in the comments. This is Mitri Don, Karate Zai featuring myself, Peasy, and Kodam Raka. The first song that I was part of that hit a million views, man. Shout out to those brethren, man. I hire bless. Share this thing, fam, and let the people know we's about to go in real. Judah, let go.
with the Crips, now I'm brewing with them Hebrews. Listen, yeah, that my people. I got kingdom, kingdom flow. I got kingdom, kingdom swag. When I walk in the building, they think I go drop a cab. I say, no, I slap like you just got my Bible on the dash. 26 and 6 inch lift, truth music banging in the bag. Rocking them true religions and go rock a fake religion. Shalom family, yeah. our praises to Kahi, the Ruach Kadash, the Holy Spirit, our praises to Anoki said, that's a higher key said, the great I am loving kindness, our praises to most of the Lamb, our minister of forgiveness, Yasha, our savior, welcome to another installment of Clear Eyes, No Visine, y'all ready for part two, Abara is shining a light, showing us the path, the pathway to crossing over. We in boot camp family, basic training. We are in the process of becoming spiritual warriors, but our obstacle course is spiritual, huh? In the first episode, we went into the first three qualities of spirit. Tonight, we going into the last four. Man, y'all mash on the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. Hit the bell so you are notified every time we drop something new. Yeah, so look, we back in the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. What is the book of remembrance? Scripture, Malachi 316. That's Malachi 316. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So that's what we dealing with, huh? Prove all things, family. If you want an opportunity to really prove this material, we have a playlist titled Clear Eyes, No Play. Oh, my bad. Clear Eyes, No Visine. Huh? Check that thing out. It has all the videos we've done in the order we were led to release them. You understand? That's the best route to try the information we putting out, right? Man, and it helps you catch up at the same time. But I ain't even gonna hold y'all, man. Let's get into it. We have a lot to go through tonight. But before we get started, let's do the usual. Revelation 3.18. Let's read that. That's Revelation 3.18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment 
that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Yeah, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Clear eyes, no visine, family. Let like, get it. Look, the book remembers of our ancient grandmother's chapter eight. Man, y'all look, we got, I forgot last video, right? I tried to put it in the comments and in the uh, in the chat. But look, we got Anoki said, huh? And the concordance numbers. And we got most of the lamb. And the concordance numbers, right? So you can know what names we saying and where they come from and their meaning, right? But get your pen and paper, yo. Pour up your living water and get out the mud. Yeah, get out the mud with it. Let's sit up here with the Elohim and focus on learning. So we're on verse 17. The fourth quality of spirit. Let's read that. And the fourth of the seven is you must be able to act with him on all levels for any reason without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye and not be self-conscious. <laughs> when I hear that quality of the spirit, I picture a die, right? Let's start at verse 17 over. Let's read it. Let's watch. And the fourth of the seven is you must be able to act with him on all levels for any reason without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye and not be self-conscious. And this is because self-awareness before him tends to be associated with self-glory and seeking to be lifted up before your fellows. Mm, I can dig that because insecurity is a form of pride, y'all. Let's keep reading. And when you, when, when your attention is on yourself, you will only hear your own answers. Woo, let me read that again. And when your attention is on yourself, you will only hear your own answers. And selflessness is true innocence. That's a deep line right there. I just thought about something just now. Hey, sis, ladies, remember... Um, that is your original gift of a woman that's had that innocence. Remember, innocence. That's what they, the, the enemy tried to rob from y'all. So now we know what true innocence is. This is a precept, right? It's a precept. It says, and selflessness, this is a quality of, that women are supposed to have. Like, we all should have it. But this is a special gift, sis, that you bring to your household, married or not. Huh? And selflessness is true innocence as you stand before him and you must think of him only and keep yourself out of your own thought, out of your thoughts entirely. Mm. Again, when I'm hearing this, I'm thinking of Ada, right? She had just got kidnapped on her wedding day, right? Ones don't want to get kidnapped any day, but least of all on your wedding day. Come on, yo. Let's go get that precept so we can get an example of the fourth quality of spirit, right? We're staying in the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers, but we're going back to chapter 4, verse 17. Let's get straight to the point. Lamech has kidnapped Ada, huh? And has been traveling for a while, and he was looking for a place to rest for the night. Right? Let's read verse 17. And I saw him when he came to a cave where he thought he would be safe from pursuit. And he threw Aku down with her face in the sand, and she could not move. And in her heart, and in her, and in her heart, and in her heart, she called out to most of the lamb to come and help her. And by and by, Lamech went to sleep. And it came to pass that passed later that night in the cave, Aku felt a gentle touch. And hands loosened her bond and gently cleaned the sand from her face with a cool wet cloth. And when she could look, it was most of the lamb. She, that's the third station crossover right there. Let's keep going. And he spoke softly to her. And he said, I am sorry you were treated in such a hard manner. My heart grieves with you. You see that? He feels all her emotions with her. He feels all her, her emotions with her. He's with her. You hear me? <laughs> and his presence, let's keep reading y'all. And his presence was healing indeed. And it cast away all fear and dismay. <laughs> and the presence of most of the family, the lamb, most of the lamb, was healing. And it cast away all fear and dismay. That's what being in the presence does. That's why we should guard it. Guard it. Guard our heart. Guard our peace. Right? But I die is so much in the presence. Most of has appeared to her right here. Right? That's how the righteous in ancient times moved. Listen. In stressful moments, they did not panic. No. Mm -mm. No, it was scary. She was stressed. 
No, they pressed into the Messiah. <laughs> she pressed into the Messiah. That's what she did, huh? They understood where their protection was coming from, right? That's the third station that I was experiencing right there because she understood what to press into in her hardest moments. And he was there for, her, right? Let's read verse 19. And the Lord said, if you may, it becomes the children of Anoki said to forgive their fellows. For if you will forgive this man for all he has done to you, it will be great help for me. And it will thwart the plans of the forces of evil, which are meant to change the courses of many things. Much to the sorrow of my father Anoki said, and I have need of you to be forgiving and to endure long suffering for me. And in the end, you will be richly blessed and a multitude, a multitude of peoples in the earth will find salvation if you can continually find your way to forgive him. And upon hearing and seeing these things, I was astonished. That's been a lean. And the Lord said further, I will deliver you now if you desire of it. But if you will forgive him, you will bring that spirit of forgiveness to a new land. And there you will have children from whom righteousness will ensue to change the course of the earth and in due time I will restore you back to your rightful husband now this was an incredible thing family it was an incredible thing Mosa was asking I died to do if I die had any thought of herself there would be no way she could do that <laughs> was being asked that she couldn't do it there's no way let's skip down to Adai's response though we're going we're going to go Halfway down, verse 21, right? Let's read. So I continued to look, and I saw Aku looking steadfastly upon the Lord, and her love for the Lord was very strong. And this was not her first personal visit from him. Mm -mm, she had a relationship, fam. She did. Let's keep reading. And she softly answered him and said, Whatever you want of me, Lord, I'll do it. And her eyes looked upon him with deep compassion and the image of his kindness never left her soul during all her days and I saw in her a faith and a strength I had not seen before in any person Ada was displaying the fourth quality of spirit fam hmm? let's go back to chapter 8 let's start verse 17 over let's read and the fourth of the seven is you must be able to act with him on all levels for any reason without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye and not be self-conscious. And this is because self-awareness before him tends to, tends to be associated with self-glory and seeking to be lifted up before your fellows. And when your attention is on yourself, you will only hear your own answers. And selflessness is true innocence as you stand before him and you must think of him only and keep yourself out of your own thoughts entirely. Or keep yourself out of your thoughts entirely. That was the spirit Adai was in. A selfless spirit. Yo, let's keep reading. And you must look to him for his expressions, not your own. Woo. For 22 years, Adai showcased the expressions Mosa asked her to express. Adai expressed the spirit of forgiveness. Therefore, she was able to express the right feelings to her children. Huh? Let's read that again. And you must look to him for his expressions, not your own. Or that will... Or those that will prove your position to someone else. <laughs> we want to hear the thoughts of Mozart when we approach him, not our own. Huh? Remember, Mozart wants to be our guide. Huh? We got to give him the steering wheel for real. This quality takes a true desire to walk in the way Mozart would want us to go. For real? Let's read. Let's read. And you must look to him for his expressions, not your own, or those that will prove your position to someone else. And you will find by keeping yourself out of your inquiries with him that when you approach him, you will not limit him to your own expectations. And know that this kind of innocence of heart is only maintained by constant repentance and clear knowledge of forgiveness and a profound understanding of true charity. Yo, selflessness. Huh? Let's keep reading. And his forgiveness must be accepted and carried with you and not ignored in the pretense of humility. <laughs> we have to really feel forgiven, fam. We can't fake the funk. Let's, let's read that again. Verse 18. And know that this kind of innocence of heart is only maintained by constant repentance and a clear knowledge of forgiveness and a profound understanding of true charity and his forgiveness must be accepted and carried with you and not ignored in the pretense of humility and you will find no answers from him 
when you do not follow this guidance because you have a plan for your own way that he will not interfere with. <laughs> wow. This is a quality of spirit that we going to have to continue to work on and get better and better at. For real. Why? Let's keep rolling. Verse 19. Let me go back to that real quick. We're about to go to the uh, fifth one, right? Selflessness, man. When we're going to ask the Lord for this understanding on things, going to the altar um, on that former relationship, right? like we are going selfless to him, asking him something, no matter what we feel, right? Because that's not, if we have a way that we want it to be, that we think it should be, don't go ask, just go do it. And he's so gentle. Most are so gentle, he ain't about to answer you because you got a way that you going to do. You got a way that you want to go and he's not going to interfere with that. He's not going to struggle with you. He gonna let you move the way you want to move. So the way we need to want to move is the way he wants us to move. And then he gonna show us. Con, let's keep going. Verse 19. And the fifth of the seven is you must view most of the lamb as one who has shared emotions with you. Mm. Remember, he came, he came to a die and let let her know that he was he felt her pain. He was grieving with her. Hmm? And she believed him. She understood it already. She knew that. <laughs> Praise the most high. Verse 19. And the fifth of the seven is you must view most of the lamb as one who has shared emotions with you in all things holy in your hum in your humanity. And while he is very aware of when you feel vindictive, greedy, lustful, or prideful, he will not share these emotions or those emotions with you, but he will only feel anxious with you while they are being felt. But he will feel with you when you are sad or happy afraid or confident worried or consoled tired or energetic and enthusiastic or hesitant in all things you are not alone and he feels your wholesome emotions with you but there is great compassion for you and understanding and uncompromised love when your emotions are unhealthy so remember so remember when you are in pain he is in pain with you and with your essential awareness of all your healthy human emotions, he is feeling them also. Hmm? And they bond you to Anoki said in a special way because he became a man just for that reason. And he is real and near and has feelings in common with you in his humanity. And you must love him and his emotions and his every thought and feeling. And you can know his feelings for he intends it to be that way. And you must cherish his company in hard times and in easy. And if you must not be in my bed and you must not be ashamed of your natural human emotions profane or holy before him and shame is shed only by open and sincere repentance and you must be willing to accept his emotions when he is feeling them alone and stir yourself to feel them with him in order to comfort or praise him and your spirit will become enlarged when you're always found to be willing to discover what he is feeling about any given thing. And you must learn to love everything and everybody he loves with him. And you can know he loves everything with you. And we never love alone because of him. And you must be willing to share in some portion of his burden with him so that he does not travel alone. And you will find that the orders of service to Enoki said established by Enoch are that which focus those who minister before Enoki said on specific aspects of his feelings making it natural for them to be felt yo this quality of spirit highlights the that that feelings are very important first off right let's read it again and hone in on what is being conveyed yo man it's powerful stuff man verse 19 and the fifth of the seven is you must view most of the lamb as one who has shared emotions with you and all things holy in your humanity you hear that first we must readjust our view if necessary yo you hear me i feel in the spirit when i read this that, that it's a process one can use to start really understanding the feelings of the most high this is one we can when we're going through this one right here that's fifth quality of spirit it's how we learn to understand what Enoki said feeling, what, 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 what most is feeling, right? First, we must have the view that the Messiah shares our healthy emotions with us. Let's read that again. And the fifth of the seven is you must view most of the lamb as one who has shared emotions with you in all things holy in your humanity. And while he is very aware of them, you feel, and while he is very aware of when you feel vindictive, greedy, lustful, or prideful, he will not share those emotions with you, but he will only feel anxious with you while they are being felt. Huh? 
that vengeful feeling we can have, <laughs> the feelings of lust that ones may still be dealing with, those times of pride that I know I can experience, right? Listen, I thought I had a conquer, I thought I conquered that pride thing, yo. I did. And the Lord started showing me that that is not the case, right? Most of don't feel that pride with me when I'm in that prideful place, huh? But instead, he feels anxious when we feel those feelings that he's not going to feel. Hmm? And when and we feel that anxiousness too, real talk. We feel that feeling as well. The more we work on our repentances, think about it. But early, early on in our walk, we feel that anxiousness after we have calmed down. You're like, man, I shouldn't move that way. Oh man, oh man, right? But the more we walk in a, or or the more we work on our spirit, right? We feel the anxiousness feeling while we're in that moment, right? <laughs> like, ooh, right, ooh, ooh, I shouldn't be here right now, in it. And the more we grow, we feel that anxiousness when the situation starts to arise. That we start seeing it coming, so we can avoid even feeling those feelings, right? The spirit is always warning us, but the more we repent, the more we hear that that voice. The earlier we hear that voice, at least. In my experience, right, it's the more I repent. The more I'm getting on point, I can hear it earlier and earlier and earlier, right? Let's keep reading, though. But he will feel with you when you are sad or happy, afraid or confident, worried or consoled, tired or energetic and enthusiastic or hesitant in all things. You are not alone. And he feels your wholesome emotions with you. The first step is to acknowledge most of feels with us, fam. That's the first thing. That helps us eliminate some of them unhealthy feelings we have. Why? Because a lot of those feelings come from not feeling under anybody really understands. Huh? Let's keep reading though. But there is great compassion for you and understanding and comp and uncompromised love when your emotions are unhealthy. <laughs> what? But but when we do find ourselves experiencing those unhealthy feelings, right? We can trust that the Messiah has not turned his back on us. Hmm. He does not feel no type of way towards us like that. Let's read it again. Watch this. Let's read it again. Let's read his response to those unhealthy feelings. But there is great compassion for you. Compassion and understanding. Understanding and com uncompromised love. Uncompromised. What you did did not compromise his love. Or what we did did not compromise his love, right? When our emotions are unhealthy. He ain't gave up on us. So don't give up on yourself, huh? Verse 20. So remember, when you are in pain, he is in pain with you. And with your essential awareness, essential awareness of all your healthy human emotions, of, <laughs> of all your healthy human emotions, he is feeling them also. You hear that? It is essential or absolutely necessary that we be aware of all our healthy human emotions, yo. It's necessary that we be aware of our feelings. We should understand when we are sad. We should understand when we're happy. We should understand when we are hesitant or, 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 or understand when we're scared, right? So any substance we use to numb those feelings could be doing us an, an injustice for real. If you smoking that blunt so you don't have to feel that problem, acknowledge our feelings. It's acknowledging them is our, the first step to mastering our feelings, yo. Huh? The second step is also acknowledging that the most that most of the lamb is sharing in our feelings as well. Let's start verse 20 over. So remember, when you are in pain, he is in pain with you. And with your essential awareness of all your healthy human emotions, he is feeling them also. And they bond you to an oak, he said, in a special way because he became a man just for that reason. And he is real and near and has feelings in common with you in his humanity doing those first steps doing those first two steps y'all it gives us a bond to Enoki said yeah the most high sharing in our emotions was the reason the most high created Moza you see that knowing that nugget helps to lift the veil of blindness that we are under most of the time yo let's keep reading and you must love him and his emotions and his every thought and feeling and you can know his feelings for he intends it to be that way and you must cherish his company in hard times and in easy huh when we start knowing that we are sharing our emotions with the messiah then we can start to know how he feels 
Hmm? We can start to ask the Messiah how he feels. By doing those first two steps, we have opened up a line of communication to where Moses can share his feelings with us as well. That is the intention of the Most High for us to know his feelings. Precept. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God would do nothing but he revealeth, revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. See that? He reveals his secrets. Moses reveals the feelings of his heart to the prophets. The righteous prophets had the fifth quality of spirit working in their lives, right? Let's go back to grandmother's verse 21. And you must not, this is grandmother chapter eight, verse 21, okay? And you must not be ashamed of your natural human emotions, profane or holy, before him. And shame is shed only by open and sincere repentance. We must not be ashamed of our natural human emotions, yo. Does that mean that some of our emotions don't bring us shame? No, it don't. But it's important we don't stay in that shame. So sincere repentance is in order, right? Look, why is it important that we don't stay in that shame? Let's make sure we understand why we don't need to be in that shame. Because, you know, we'll make excuses and be, be stuck in that shame for a while. No, no, no. It's important that we leave that alone, right? Let's get a precept. We're going to the book of remembrance of Moses this time, right? The book of Remembrance of Moses, chapter 2, verse 14, right? This right this right here is after Mattaniah, who we know as Abel, was discovered dead. They go, they go deal with that account again in the book of Moses. The witchcraft that Kenneth was doing leads to his death, right? But Kenneth, who we know as Cain, in the Bible, wasn't trying to kill his brother. He just wanted his wife. <laughs> Madness, but that's all. He wasn't trying to kill um, Mattaniah or Abel. He wasn't trying to do that. The deceiver got him, though. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> He, yeah, he promised you. He didn't tell you everything he was going to get, right? Let's read about how Kenneth or Cain felt after he saw the consequences of his actions. Let's read. And it came to pass that when Kenneth began to realize that which had transpired, he was stricken with shame. See that? He was stricken with shame. Let's keep reading. And Semihazah did not know that such a thing as shame existed. And he was heavenly drawn toward it. And it was as though he had immediately became fixated, fixated upon shame. He was overjoyed at this new discovery. And Semihazah made shame the central feeling he would seek to feed on among mankind upon the earth. Man, did y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Hmm. And Semihazah did not know that such a thing as shame existed. And he was heavily drawn toward it. And he was heavily drawn toward it and it was as though he had immediately became fixated upon shame and he was overjoyed at this new discovery and Semihazah made shame the central feeling he would seek to feed on among mankind upon the earth hmm. the central feeling that Semihazah feeds on is shame Feelings are important, fam. Let's keep reading though. Verse 15. And after he discovered shame, he would use every means at his disposal to bring it about. And over time, he learned to make shame a lifelong experience of those who followed after self-glory. And he would come to use every means to bring shame to a fullness in suicide. Look at that. Suicide is when the feeling of shame goes to the max, right? You see why we must not feel shame? Hmm. He said, "Shame is what stays in the in the in the mind and the experience of those who follow after self glory." And earlier, it, we let, we were uh, a borrower let us know that self glory is uh, is likened right or being self conscious is likened to having want to have self glory and being placed above your fellows. Kind? Hmm. It's deep. Let's keep reading though. So the behavior of liars and thieves and braggarts and ignorant ruffians and fornicators and all such things may lead to the fullness of shame. Wow. One more time, y'all. So the behavior of liars and thieves and braggarts and ignorant ruffians and fornicators. And all such things may lead to the fullness 
ashamed. Repentance, family. We can repent today. You hear me? Tonight, we can do it. How do we combat shame? Let's go to the Bible, though. Let's go there. We're going to Psalms 35 and 5. Psalms 35, um, 34 and 5. Psalms chapter 34, verse 5. We're going to be in the English Standard Version this time, right? Let's read that. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. <laughs> we got to look to the Father. We need a relationship with the Messiah. Walking in these qualities of spirit will give us a massive spiritual uplifting. These qualities of the spirit will shape our views, fam, and purify our feelings. Why? Because these qualities of the spirit is having us look on the Father. And what does that do? Let's read it again. Psalms 34 and 5, right? Those who look to him are radiant in their faces shall never be ashamed and we shall never be under the bondage of shame huh let's go back to grandmother's chapter 8 verse 21 let's keep reading verse 21 chapter 8 of grandmothers and you must be and you must not be ashamed of your natural human human emotions profane or holy before him and shame is shed only by open and sincere repentance and you must be willing to accept his emotions when he is feeling them alone and stir yourself to feel them with him in order to comfort or praise him yo when, when we are aware of our actions that would cause the most high distress we should strive to feel those feelings with him so he doesn't feel those feelings alone Right. And when we are aware of actions that would cause the most high to feel joy, we should strive to feel those feelings with him so he doesn't feel them alone. Right. So we can praise him in the moments. Right. This is a relationship right here that, that most is asking for us. Right. Verse 22 or asking of us. Let's go. Verse 22. And your spirit will become enlarged when you are always found to be willing to discover what he is feeling about any given thing and you must learn to love everything and everybody he loves with him and your family the messiah loves everybody right the edomites too that's right <laughs> the edomites too he loves them so we should ask the lord what he feels about people in our life especially the ones who are hard to deal with right the lord will show us how to love them Let's keep reading. And you know he loves everything with you. And we never love alone because of him. And you must be willing to share in some portion of his burden with him. So that he does not travel alone. And you will find that the orders of service to Enoki said established by Enoch are that which focus those who minister before Enoki said. On specific aspects of his feelings, making it natural for them to be felt. It's all about feelings, yo. The Holy Order focuses on the feelings of the Father. The religion of Shabuwa is the feelings of the Father being expressed by the righteous and the Eric Kodeshi. Huh? It's all about feelings, family. Man, that was number five, right? Let's go to the sixth quality of spirit. Let's get there. The sixth quality of spirit. The sixth quality of spirit. Verse 23. And the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of approval enough to look for wherever it can be found. And in order to love repentance and honestly seek reproval, one must view reproval and repentance to be having an intimate relationship with most of the Lamb for the purpose of changing those things in your life to better express the desires Enoki said has for you during the living of your gift of life. And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting but the children of his right hand consider it to be exalting and find fulfillment to know the truth and respond to it with holiness of heart and know that it is the very process of reproval and repentance that prepares you to be effective in your encounters with most of the land and that process is essential to prepare you to in the end, stand before him clean and unashamed. And those who are to be found seeking reproval in this way will rejoice in his presence in this life and in the one to come. And they will find that in the flesh, they can truly cross over. And all this is because most of the lamb is the only means whereby man can be forgiven and made clean before Anoki said. And know that reproval followed by repentance supported by his spirit will be a certainty 
will of a certainty lead to a rich relationship with both the creator and creation. And those who are afraid of and those who are afraid or threatened or angry because of reproval are seen by him to be unwilling to know him. And we cannot feel the love of those who we have chosen not to know, nor can we love them. Man, yo. <laughs> Repentance, yo. Y'all see that? Repentance is spiritual. Huh? Repentance is spiritual. Spiritual currency. Yeah? It's spiritual currency, baby. Let's read that sixth quality of spirit again. Verse 23. And the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of it. Reproval. My bad. And be comfortable with all forms of reproval enough to look for wherever it can be found. We got to learn to love repentance, yo. Repentance is not just turning from sin. Nuh-uh. Repentance is turning from the sake. Repentance is turning for the sake of the father. Hmm? We got to learn to love to do that, right? I might be doing a job. Watch this. I might be doing a job with my brother and we get uh, we get done around lunchtime every day, right? But I, I usually stop and eat lunch before I finish the job, right? And come back and finish. It's just what I do, right? But my brother eats and gets that itis. <laughs> he gets that itis. He gets to getting all tired and lazy. He's not good. He's not as good of a worker at that point. There's nothing wrong with what I eat. And I ain't breaking the rules by eating it at that time. But for my brother, I can repent and I eat until we are done. So my brother can be a strong worker for the whole shift. Would that not please the father? That's just an example, right? That's just an example. I'm just, but that that's how uh, an example of repenting when you're not sinning. You ain't sinning. There wasn't no sin to eat when I ate, right? Let's read that again, though. Verse 23. And the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of approval enough to look for wherever it can be found and be comfortable with all forms of approval. Y'all hear that? Sometimes we might get the most of type of approval, that gentle approval. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that approval with loving kindness. Huh? But sometimes, sometimes we done pissed our people off. <laughs> And they reprove us with that fire, that fire. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes our people don't look, they don't, some, some of our people don't like confrontation, right? So when they reprove, it's too gentle, right? But it's reproof nonetheless. To deal with this quality of spirit, we need to be comfortable with all forms of approval, right? And take all forms of approval serious. Even, even reproval that's incorrect. Huh? Why? Because reproval is always an opportunity to look at ourselves from somebody else's perspective, right? And learn to repent for the Father's sake, not for our own, not for what we look like to other people. But how can we help other people? Because we know we're helping the Father, right? Remember last episode, it said it, it, said it in there that the, the Father, the Most High, Anoki said it's distress when people are distressed. He, he, he feels people's pain. So when we help people, we're helping Anoki said. Hmm? When did I clothe you when you feed you when you was hungry? When when did I clothe you when you were naked? When did I come visit you in jail? When we do that to the least of anybody, right? We're doing that for Anoki said. So when we're repenting for somebody, just strictly to help them, not for anything for ourselves, but to help them. Man, most of Anoki said is smiling on us, yo. Hmm. Let's start verse 23 over. And the sixth of the seven is you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of approval enough to look for wherever it can be found. And in order to love repentance and earnestly seek approval, one must view approval and repentance to be having an intimate relationship with most of the lamb for the purpose of changing those things in your life to better express the desires of Anoki said. Or my bad, to better express the, 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 the slow it down. To better express the the desires Anoki said has for you during the living of your gift of life. And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute. We'll read that again. We'll read it. And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting. 
one more time. We're going to read that one more time for our spiritual man who think that line is for someone else. You feel me? And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting. Bruh, <laughs> you can't tell me y'all ain't feel, y'all ain't felt that before. You're, hmm? I'm going to keep 100. Watch this, y'all. Ari can give me some approval, and I don't want to hear it. And that feeling right there can rise up. <laughs> it don't feel good either, cause that. Watch this, because look, <laughs> it don't feel good. So now I program myself that when I feel that, I program my mind to understand that this feeling is not of the Most High, right? How? Well, not our approval feels that way to me, right? Listen. When the approval when the reproval is wrong, I don't usually get that way, right? I try to reason, right? When I can see what my wife is saying, I usually don't feel that way either. You know what I'm saying? I I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? They work on myself, right? It's when I don't see what Ari's saying. <laughs> That's when them feelings rise up. You did. I had to peep that. I had to acknowledge. Remember we said the last one? I had to I had to it's it's essential that you know your feelings and how you feel, right? So I had to pay attention to myself. So now when that feeling arises, it's a red flag to me, right? It's all about feelings, family. I don't care the situation or the person. When I feel that feeling rise up, I need to shut up. I need to shut up. I'm not perfect. Even though I know that I'm not perfect, but I'm a lot better, right? But even if I don't shut up at that moment, because sometimes I don't. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Sometimes I don't. Right. But even if I don't shut up at that moment, it doesn't take long for me to go talk to the Lord because I recognize that feeling. I can't lie to myself. I get that man, yo, I, I don't walk around the corner and say any type of stuff I didn't say <laughs> it. Walk around the corner. First thing I was like, wow, man, I felt man, I feel it right there. Man. And then I go talk to the Mozart and he shows me my error. Then I can go apologize and repent. Right. It's pride that raises up that feeling, yo. Let's read that again. And those with pride view reproval and repentance as debasing or insulting. But the children of his right hand consider to be exalting and find fulfillment to know the truth and respond to it with holiness of heart. Practice makes perfect, fam. But first, we got to acknowledge our shortcomings, yo. Huh? Huh? verse 24 and know that it is this very process of reproval and repentance that prepares you to be effective in your encounters with most of the lamb and that process is essential to prepare you to in the end stand before him clean and unashamed <laughs> remember everyone everyone goes to the first station after death hmm? everyone goes to that first station after death the difference is how ones perceive it let's start verse 24 over and know that it, it is this very process of reproval and repentance that prepare that prepares you to be effective in your encounters with most of the lamb and that process is essential to prepare you to is in that process it's essential to prepare you to in the end Stand before him clean and unashamed. <laughs> Yo, in our A Borrow Life After Death episode, part one and two, we learned about the seven stations after death. Ones can linger in the first three stations depending on how well they work through the process of approval and repentance. We work on those skills of processing through approval and repentance on this earth. I mean, you can work on it there, but... <laughs> You want to you want to have it down, right? You want to have it down, right? Verse 24 from the top. And know and know that it is this very process of reproval and repentance that prepares you to be effective in your encounters with most of the lamb. And that process is essential to prepare you to in the end stand before him clean and unashamed. And those who are to be found seeking reproval in this way will rejoice in his presence in this life and in the one to come in this life and the one to come look at the cover photos to the life after death videos we can either rejoice in his presence or we 
can be confused and terrified. Look at that. Let's keep reading, yo. Let's keep, yo. Let's keep reading. And they will find that in the flesh, they can truly cross over. And all this is because most of the lamb is the only means whereby man can be forgiven and made clean before Anoki said. And know that reproval followed by, followed by repentance, supported by his spirit. Oh, look, look. It said, supported by his spirit, supported by the spirit of God, right? Because we can accept reproval and then repent for selfish reasons, right? For personal gain, right? But when we repent in the spirit of God, verse 25, and know that reproval followed by repentance, supported by his spirit, will of a certainty lead to a rich relationship with both the creator and creation. And those who are afraid of afraid or threatened or angry because of reproval are seen by him to be unwilling to know him. And we cannot feel the love of those who we have chosen not to know, nor can we love them. Man, that's 100. That's so 100. Let's start verse 25. And know that reproval followed by repentance supported by his spirit will of a certainty lead to a rich relationship with the both with both the creator and creation. Yo, if we want to have the relationship with the Father, receiving approval with the right spirit and practicing repentance for the right reasons, it's gonna give us a relationship with the Father and the Era Kodeshi. And what that said, let's keep reading. And those who are afraid or threatened or angry because of approval are seen by him to be unwilling to know him. And we cannot feel the love of those who have chosen not to know, nor can we love them. We cannot feel, and yo, we can't feel the love of those we have chosen not to know, nor can we love them for real. That's with anybody, yo. There's so much wisdom in, this, in, in that statement right there, man. And all this reading, right? Amazing, yo. One more time. And those who are afraid of threatening, those who are afraid or threatened or angry because of approval are seen by him to be unwilling to know him. And we cannot feel the love of those who have chosen not to know, nor can we love them. Yo, when we are afraid of approval, threatened by approval, angry with approval most of feel like we don't want to know him uh oh there go that precept <laughs> there go that man there go that precept again right matthew chapter 7 we're gonna start at verse 21 let's read not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I process unto them. I'm not, and then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Wow. That was the sixth quality of spirit right there. Loving repentance. And notice, practicing these qualities of the spirit with Moza and the Most High is also showing us how we should practice these qualities of the spirit with our brothers and sisters. You did. Christ wants to be treated like he is our friend. But watch, watch this. Christ wants us to treat every man like he wants to be treated, right? Christ wants us to treat every man like he wants to be treated. Marinating that, right? The seventh quality of the spirit. Hold on, let me, let me say that. Let me cut you. Know, I left that open. I left that too open. You can't treat everybody like your friend because not everybody is moving in the spirit, right? But you can be in the right spirit with everybody, right? You can be, behave with loving kindness with everybody. With everybody, no matter what they have done to you in the past, no matter what they have done to your people in the past, you, there's a way that you can move that Mozart will be pleased with, right? Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. We're, going, we're, the, seventh, we're the seventh one. It's the last quality of the spirit. We're there. Right, we're the book remembers of our ancient grandmothers, chapter 8, verse 26. Right, let's get it, let's get it. Right, and the seventh of the seven is each one must address in some fashion the four stations of purification of Eden while they are in the temporal world. <laughs> so, part of the seventh quality, of, the seventh quality of the spirit, right, is that we, in some form or fashion, deal with the first four stations of purification that we encounter in the afterlife. Y'all go back and check out that episode if you miss it. We discussed, we discussed those stations in those last two episodes, right? Bar Life After Death Part 1 and 2. 
Let's start verse 26 over. And the seventh of the seven is each one must address in some fashion the four stations of purification of Eden while they are in the temporal world. And accordingly, you must be urgent to continually find new understanding and insight into the grandeur of his personal love for you and those you love. I'm read that again. And accordingly, you must be urgent to continue, continually find new understanding and insight into the grandeur of his personal love for you and those you love and for your enemies as well. And also seek with all effort to find the truth and follow him, even if he goes beyond the tradition of men. <laughs> even if the truth that the father shows us goes against the traditions of men right even if it goes against the traditions of our forefathers right even if it goes against the traditions of our church right even if it goes against the traditions of our camp huh even if it goes against the traditions of our elder and our pastor Moses truth is supreme we are called to follow Moses wherever he goes right let read. And in this way, you may grow in maturity and in your ability to grasp the simple magnitude of his all encompassing love. And you must come to value the truth above the acceptance of the world. Hmm. Whoa, now let me read that again. And you must come to value the truth above the acceptance of the world. You know, people struggle with this. The best of us can struggle with this. Let's read that again. And you must come to value the truth above the acceptance of the world. The truth is valuable. Huh? The truth is valuable. Hold on, y'all. Let me get this saved. All right, there we go. The truth is valuable. More valuable than the acceptance of this world, for real. Right? Precept. We'll go get the precept. We go get that. Christ said the same thing for real, right? Matthew chapter 10. We we'll go to verse 37. Huh? Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Let's read that. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. <laughs> Most is the truth, yo. So let's go back to grandma, grandmother chapter 8, the end of verse 26. We ain't the truth. We ain't, we ain't, who, who we following before him? Man, this relationship, we gotta, we gotta build it. We gotta grow it. We gotta feed it, man. For real. He is our power. He is our light. Verse 26. And you must come to value the truth above the acceptance of the world. So now Abara is going to show us how to walk in this temporal world to experience the four stations on earth. Right? We're going to run through this. We'll try to get through this, man. Verse 27. And you must keep your life in the circumstances and the condition where you can walk with and share in company with the marvelous spirits of life that he has put into all the holy forms of creation. And this way, your spirit will walk with assurance in the first station here in the temple world. We have to put ourselves in a position to hear the spirit, y'all. Right. We can talk to the Lord in the spirit. We can talk to creation in the spirit. We should start practicing. Right. Man, verse 28. And learn to know their Kodeshi and what they teach. Start that over. And learn to know their Kodeshi and what they teach you and what they have to impart to you about that which Noki said would say, feel, do, or be. And these four words represent the exact revelatory process of the first part of the power of godliness. Hmm. Look, y'all, when ones can afford it, man, y'all buy the handbook of established righteousness, right? Remember, it's only the PDF is only $10, yo. Right, you know, that book is expensive, right? But the PDF is ten dollars, right? And there it has it has the definitions of a lot of creation. Uh, uh, not everything in the world, but a lot, especially in America. It might not have some things that are in your part of America, but you know, it got things, it got things in it, right? And um we should learn those and start to observe those definitions in creation for real. And the Eric Kodeshi will show us what Anoki said would say. Hmm. What they're gonna show us what Anoki said would feel, what he would do, 
which helps us understand and okay says being and how to be like be perfect like our father in heaven right say say feel do be is a process of revelation when we operate in the power of godliness we will deal with say feel do be in this future or in the future father willing but we did de we dealt with the power of godliness in the remembrance of enoch series we have an episode titled that the power of godliness may y'all go check it out if you missed it right let's read, let's read verse 28 again and learn to know the eric kodeshi and what they teach or what they teach you and what they have to impart to you about that which noki said would say feel do or be and these four words represent the exact revelatory process of the first part of the power of godliness and in this way, your gift of life will be enriched and you and the Eric Kodeshi will find wonderful fulfillment in your creation together. And this is because you both have been created to walk in your lives together and they rejoice together with you in your spirit. And they rejoice to behold one who walks in the image of Enoki said, both in their body and their spirit. And the Eric Kodeshi will sustain you in health and in holiness of heart and in the truth. Remember, the Dekadarchi are the enemies of Enoki said. And they spout obscenities at him. And how could we love and cling to and be sustained by his enemies and be found to walk also with him in this life or in the life to come? And these fallen bullies are not to be allowed place in your life, nor are they to be allowed to teach or influence your little ones. Right. In a friendly relationship with the Dekadarchi who burden Moza will bring you to estrangement to both him and his creation. And you are to see to it that all your living excludes them according to the direction of the spirit. For it, if allowed in your life, they will bind you down with silken threads like a spider does his prey. And you will be devoured by them. And some portion of your gift of life will be wasted. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. So look, so part of growing that bond with Eric Kodeshi is lessening our bond with the Dekadarchi, the follow watchers. Y'all look at the list of the Dekadarchi. Now imagine how much we willingly interact with the Dekadarchi. TVs, phones, generated electricity. We are called to put ourselves in a position to connect with Eric Kodeshi. That's what Abar said. He also said not to be sustained by the Dekadarchi. That's what Abar said, right? The Bible said the same thing, y'all. Let's get the precept. We're going to Revelations 18 and 4. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. A sin is being doing something that disconnects you from the Father. Right? And we're learning the Dekadarchi disconnect us from the Father. So when we're dealing with the Dekadarchi, Dekadarchi is a type of sin, especially if we're doing it like in a friendly matter. And you know, Father got mercy on us, you know what I'm saying? At times of ignorance, he winked, but he, he he called us all to repent, right? Babylon is full of Dekadarchi, yo. And when we come up out of her, we stop relying on the Dekadarchi to support us. Instead, we go to the wilderness and the Erekodeshi support us. The holy watchers support us, not the following ones. Precept, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Right? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Isaiah is going to ask you a question, huh? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> that way is there Kodeshi taking care of us. You heard that? Creation taking care of us. Precept. Revelation 12 and 6. Revelation 12 and 6. Let's read that. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Who would feed her? Huh? There Kodeshi. Creation, fam. Let's go back to grandmother chapter 8, verse 32. Y'all see that? It's been in our book the whole time. Let's read. And Abara counseled the people there to dutifully avoid them in every undertaking. Uh, Abara's talking about the Dekatarchi, about the Dekatarchi, the fallen waters, man, uh, fallen watchers. Dutifully uh, avoid them. <laughs> Make it your duty to avoid them, right? Let's read it again. 
and a bar council the people there to dutifully avoid them in every undertaking. And in those days preceding the flood, the Decadarchi were enlarging their domain in the souls of men. And he said, if you abide by this council to not walk with them, you will find yourself at ease and joyous in the second station here in the temporal world. Look at this, man. Look at look at look at look at that list. You can find that list in the book Remembrance of First and Second Achi on page 68. I mean 68. 682 in the appendix. Hmm. Let's read about one of those watches, though. Let's do that. Let's read about one of those watches. I'm gonna read about one we don't talk about much, right? That's number 20 on that list. Look at number 20. You had yell. You had yell, right? Tomb writing. The original meaning of this holy watcher's name was God will guide. Look, and this watcher teaches death. Woo! Now, if we turn to page 692, right, we can read about this fallen watcher right here. The, this Decadarchi, right? Let's read. Yeah, number this number 20. Yahadiel. God will guide. Writing on tombs, right? He is the 20th from Semihasa. This watcher is writing in words. The senior spirit of this watcher is specifically writing on tombstones. The Babylonians called him Nebo. Look at this. Look at this. All right, what's he reading? Hold on. No, no. Hold up, fam. Hold up, fam. I think. Let's, let me do better. Look. Let me go get another precept real quick, right? Benalini just said that the senior spirit of this watcher is specifically writing on tombs. That's what he said, right? Okay, that's that's just the senior spirit. That means there's more than one Yehadiel, right? Precept. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to the Gospel of Mark. We're going to chapter five. We're going to start at verse one, right? I want you to peek game. Peek this, right? Chapter five of Mark, verse one. Let's read. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes, the Gadarenes, right? And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Where the man come from? This man came out of the tombs with an unclean spirit. Look at this, y'all. Y'all see this? Let's keep reading. Let's start verse two over, right? And when he was come out of the ship, this is talking about Moses. Moses Christ, he just came out the ship. Him and the apostles and come over this this water, right? Immediately, let's read. Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Verse three, who had his dwelling among the tombs. He lived among the tomb, tombs, y'all. Let's keep reading. <laughs> and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Woo! Because that he had been often bound. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains. And the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Woo! And the fetters broken in pieces. Man, neither could any man tame him. Bruh. The unclean spirit in this dude was super strong. Right? Verse 5. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones that's that's like a religious practice right there hmm that's it that's it that's what folks be doing and i look that up you remember he'll go up to the mountain too that's where they go worship their gods the wicked go up to the mountain too yo and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones remember they used to cry to Tammuz? hmm Remember they used to cry the time move? We'll keep reading, y'all. We'll keep reading. I'll be going to precepts all night, fam. <laughs> but this is important. We'll go here, right? And cutting himself with stones, verse 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. What did he do? He ran and worshipped him. What did, what did the spirit in this man do? Huh? Let's read it again. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. The demons know Christ is God and they do fear. Praise the most high. Let's keep reading verse six. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee? Jesus, the son of the most high God. I adjure thee, my God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. That's why he said all that. Because... <laughs> Christ said, come out of this man, you unclean spirit. He was commanding that demon, right? And he asked him, what is thy name? And he asked her saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. 
Now you see that? There are many of these tomb writing spirits. You see that? There's many of them. There's many Yahadiels. The principal one is the one that writes in tomb, but there's many of them. Verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding and all the devils besought him saying send us into the swine that we may enter into them and forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine he was in control of them it said he gave them leave he gave them permission you understand and, and it was for verse 13 and it was forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done so now let's go back to the book of Achi, right? Page 692, right? Let's start reading about Yehediel again, right? He is the 20th from Semihasa. This wonder this watcher is writing in words, not just in tombs, but writing in words. You see that? Let's keep reading. This senior spirit of this watcher is specifically writing on tombstones. The Babylonians called him Nebo. He was a dedicated follower in the watcher we call paper. And the watcher called paper, right? When he was created, he had the definition that all real knowledge comes from God, right? He was truly the elder of a person seeking the face of God. Instead, he chose the definition that only knowledge written by man is valid. Look at this. <laughs> what definition did this fallen watcher choose? Read that again. Instead, he chose the definition that only knowledge written by man is valid. He has now been a major force in the corruption of the world and the blindness of man. Look at this. Wow, let's keep reading. He teaches that writing with words is authoritative and binding with names and signatures. <laughs> That's Babylon. This is Babylon, yo. This dude is teaching Babylon. That's the way of Babylon, ain't it? Let's keep reading. He is the master of dark and evil knowledge. He teaches the art of controlling society through education and communication. Hmm. It's a powerful follow. Watch your family. We see his works today. How, how are you able to have a church in Babylon, in America? You got to go to their schools. You got to be educated by them. Who is this? Look, he is the master of dark and evil knowledge. He teaches the art of controlling society through education and communication. It said it right there. Let's keep reading, y'all. Let's keep reading. He is the master of the world's educators. Oh, my goodness. This you had to yell, dude, man. He's a problem. He's a problem. Look, do you see why the Lord wants to be our guide? You see that? <laughs> do y'all see the dangers of being a respecter of persons? You see that? Let's keep reading. He is the master of insanity, lunacy, and the clergy. Oh, my goodness. Hey, yo, you start telling the truth, they make you insane. See that? You start exposing the written lies and the written things. Of the, you're, you're, you're lunatic. Right? And he's the master of the clergy And the clergy Come on yo That would be the leaders of the Christianity of Christianity, Right That's the clergy Huh Catholic leaders and more Let's keep reading He has founded religions and supported Great evil done in the name of God He is the enemy Of the mind of God in you Oh man, that love of the father you want in your mind, seeking a father, you're heading your after that, fam. He after that. We starting to find our way towards the truth, and he, oh man, he gonna make sure you got all that, uh, all them documents, them, 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 them books with bones in it. He gonna throw it our way. Yeah, I'm gonna give him all these bones. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he good. He good. You know, rat poison 98% good. It's the 2% to kill you. Oh, he good. He gonna give you that 98%, but that 2%, bruh. <laughs> That's why we gotta have a spirit, fam. We gotta have a spirit. Yahadiel's a problem. Let me go get one more precept, though. Huh? About Yahadiel and some other. It's, we're gonna talk about some other following watch while I get this precept. But I really wanna go here for Yahadiel. We're going to 1st Achi, chapter 12, verse 54. 1st Achi, chapter 12, verse 54. Let's read that. And Achi trembled to see such a sight. And Barakel. Who is the law of man? 
brought to power the ancient laws that sprang up from those who built the great tower. Wait a minute. That's the Tower of Babel, right? Hmm? Which laws? <laughs> you know, the Tower of Babel links to Babylon, right? What laws come from Babylon? That would have power. This is a man-made law, right? One day, Father willing, we're going to go into those laws, but all... <laughs> But all in the Father's time, man. We got so much today, man. We've been out here for, bro. Let's keep reading. Verse 54. Y'all watch this. Y'all pay attention to this. And Achi, and Achi trembled to see such a sight. And Baraquel, who was the law of man, brought to power the ancient laws that sprang up from those who built the great tower. And oppression covered the earth. Mm. And Ramtel, who was coal, or that is to say the burning stones of Semihaza, began to conquer the fields of those who put forth seed. Hmm. And his pollutions arose like smoke. And Sedawell, who is a strong, who is strong drink, came forth in abundance to pollute the minds of people, of all people, and vain imaginations. Um, uh, Sedawell. Who is strong drink came forth in abundance to pollute the minds of all people and vain imagining and vain imaginings and terrible illusions covered all the minds of the people. All right, right here, y'all watch this. Let's keep reading right here. And Yahadiel, who is written lies. I came here just for that. Huh? But I thought I mean I wanted y'all to see the other following watchers too. Strong drink. Yeah, I just want, I wanted y'all to see that too. I ain't gonna lie. But I came here for this. And Yahadiel, who is written lies, written lies. When someone writes lies knowingly, Yahadiel is the fallen watcher whispering in their ears, guiding them in their actions. Oh my goodness, yo. I've seen this recently. I've seen it. I want y'all to pay attention to this. I want y'all to pay attention. It's real tough. Really, really watch. So when you see this actions in man, you know the spirit that's behind it. Khan. I'm not talking about what you think it's a lie or it could be a lie. No, when you know that that person is lying and you know that person knows they're lying, this is a demon that's dealing, they're dealing with. I don't care who that person is, how great that person is, how everybody loves that person, how it seems like the father has been dealing with that person. I get it, huh? But Ezekiel told us that we can start righteous and end wicked. So I don't care what you were doing yesterday. I'm talking about right now, homie. When someone writes lies knowingly, your head of yell is the fallen watcher whispering in their ears. It's the Dekadachi guarding, guiding them in their actions. Let's keep reading, yo. And your head yell, who is written lies, rose up and taught all the people. What? Hey, yo, this verse we are reading in Achi is talking about our time right now <laughs> it is it is y'all might not have read our chi through and through so you can just trust me on that i'm not going to go and prove that right now we've been here for a minute but this what we're reading is talking about our time hmm? let's keep reading and yahadi l who is written lies rose up and taught all the people that which destroyed faith in the hearts of great multitudes and it separated the love of men from one another Look at this. Yahadiel rose up and taught all the people things that destroyed their faith. When it said all, it didn't mean all. It just means the people that were listening to that lie. Those lies. I've seen the Dekadarchi work, y'all. I've seen this. I've seen the Dekadarchi take men away from the truth. I've seen this. I've seen the Dekadarchi have caused men to accept a lie. I've seen this. I've seen this decadachi cause men to condemn the righteous and uphold the wicked. Yo, I've seen it. Be careful, family. This decadachi is looking to deceive the elect or ones who would be the elect. Let's keep going, though. We're going to start dealing with decadachi Father Willing on this channel more and more. The Father is starting to want us to understand these fallen watchers. We need to because they're working through men. They're not just walking around as a demon slapping you. You don't see who's slapping you. No, they're working through men. Just like Mosa and the Most High got to work through men, through our agencies, the devil. He doing the same thing with the wicked. Oh, man. He wants us to know about these fallen watchers and how they affect us. And how they affect us. Yo, man, if this information is giving value to your life, man, 
you can support the channel by liking the video sharing the video and subscribing to the channel you can also support by going to our band camp in the description and supporting our music ministry for real or so whatever the spirit leads you to by using the cash app link that's also in the description right you are not obligated <laughs> But you will be much appreciated for real though, man. Let's get it. Let's go, man. Let's get let's get this done, man. Man. Man, this is deep, bro. It's deep. So that's what Abara is telling us when it comes to operating with the earth or operating on the earth. So we can deal with the second station from this plane. We need to have a relationship with the Eric Kodeshi, right? And um lessen our bond with the Dekadarchi. The Eric Kodeshi are the holy watchers. And the Dekadarchi are the fallen watchers, right? So we're going back to chapter 8, right? We're going back to chapter 8 of um, Grandmothers. We're at verse 33, right? Let's keep going. And as the for the third station here in the temple world, as long as you have breath, you have an opportunity to become acquainted with the man Anoki said became. So he could live in the temporal world with you. And you must love him and do whatever and do whatsoever it takes in your repentance to find him. And if you seek him, you will find him because his greatest desire is to be found by you. Huh? That's so important, man. Hmm. It ain't too late, family. As long as we have breath in us, we have a chance to know Messiah, right? And how do we know Messiah? Through repentance and by seeking him. Seeking him where? Through the spirit, through the Erekodeshi, through our brothers and sisters, through the word. All those avenues can show us the repentance we need to make ourselves draw closer to most of the Lamb, right? And Abara said, if we seek the Messiah, we will find him because he is looking to be found by us. So I got precepts showing that. Let's go. Matthew 7, verses 7 through 8. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek. And you shall find knock and it shall be open unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened man the bible is full of precepts telling us to seek the lord for real proverbs 8 and 17 i'm gonna run through these i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me them promises yo jeremiah 29 and 13 let's read that and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart Diligence, right? That's how the prophets could, could cross over in ancient times. They sought the Father diligently. Earlier in the series, we read about Canaan and Shamar seeking the Lord the whole winter season, waiting for an answer. Diligence, fasting, and prayer is another way to seek the Lord, right? In the Remembrance of Enoch series, we, were, we read about Enoch going on a journey and fasting for several days, seeking protection for the righteous. Diligence, and when Enoch got back from his journey, that's when he got his answer. Obedience to Moses' spirit is another way we seek the Lord. Huh? Let's go back to grandmother chapter 8, verse 33. Let's read that again. And as for the third station here in the temple world, as long as you have breath, you have an opportunity to become acquainted with the man Anoki said became. So he could live in the temple world with you, and you must love him and do whatsoever it takes in your repentance to find him. And if you seek him, you will find him because his greatest desire is to be found by you. And it is a certainty that you can know him because he has no other purpose to be your redeemer than to be known by you. So he can take you back to his father in Eden and he will speak to you for in his heart, he only has a voice to speak to you. And because he knows your mind and heart, he can know how to speak to you and speak to you with the spirit so you will understand. Man, Moses speaks to, to you how he speaks to you. Akwath Ahayim. He speaks to me how he speaks to me. It might not be the same. It might not be the same as how he speaks to you. But clear nonetheless, if we listen, right? Precept, John chapter 10, verse 27, right? John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them them and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus promises family walking in the seven qualities of spirit is how we accomplish the third station on earth, man. Verse 35 and his compassion is so great that he we're back in chapter eight of grandmothers. Verse 35 and his compassion is so great that he only requires of you that which is reasonable and just because he is merciful and he understands you so well that he knows how you became who you are and that which you are capable of 
capable of as he assists you back to Eden and into the arms of his loving father. And Oki said, and his grace and mercy are infinite. And he will take in account, he will take into account all the conditions that foster things in your life that make you unlike what his father created you to be. And by these things, you can enter easily and experience wholeness in the third station. Huh? Most of those are we went through, fam. That doesn't mean he wants us to continue to walk in those shortcomings. No, no, it means most of knows how to purify us away from those shortcomings. Huh? That's why we are seeking those reprovals, right? As we repent, the closer we get to the Lord. Mm. Then most of gives us more reprovals. Precept. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Repent. It's like we working out in the gym, right? And Moses is our, he's our trainer. You dig? And he's like, no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain, fam. You get it off your chest, bro. Get it off your chest. So it might be a struggle, but the Lord won't let too much weight on your bar, fam. He won't let too much weight on our bar. And repentance, a repentance, it gets us stronger. Let's go back to grandmother chapter 8, verse 36. Huh? That repentance gets us stronger. So the more we come back, we can lift more weight. Right? And we can get we can we can let go of some of them shortcomings. He cleanses us, he purifies us, he makes us whole, you know, he he fills us out. That's what working out do. It fills your body out when your man gets getting strong, right? He fills us out. So now we're gonna be prepared for that third station. Con, that right, let's keep going. Verse 36. We're back in chapter 8, verse 36. And lastly, when you know him and walk with him and know what he is feeling and know his truth, you will have compassion on him and come to his aid. And when you will and when you will feel at home in the fourth station. And, well, my bad. And then you will feel at home in the fourth station and be ready and willing to plunge into his service if he so desires it of you as an angel from the fourth station. And you can enter in to aid him in his burdens that he carries for his father and for others. Precept, y'all. <laughs> y'all listen to Isaiah. Isaiah. Check out Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6 and 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Isaiah knew the Lord, huh? And walked with the Lord. Hmm? Isaiah knew what the Lord was feeling and knew the Lord's truth. Therefore, he could have compassion on the Lord and was able to do works for the Lord and still is from the fourth station. But trust, Isaiah would diligently seek the Lord. Let's go back to chapter, grandmother. Are we in chapter we're in chapter 8. Yeah, we're in chapter 8, verse 37. Let's go. And Abara ended his teaching by saying, if we do all these things with diligence, we will be able to cross over while in the temporal body and become one who can walk and labor in this life hand in hand with the angels of heaven. Amen. Woo! Huh? If we do all these things, all seven qualities of spirit with diligence, we can receive the highest honors in this life and the life to come. Huh? A borrower just dropped some heavy jewels in that teaching once again. Hmm. Once again. But let's keep reading. We ain't done. Man, this is, I know it's heavy. I know. I know. I was going through my notes. I didn't know this was like this. <laughs> I was like, like, I knew it was like this, but it's coming over here, like, really in front of the mic. It's felt like, oh, snap. You hear me? It's been heavy for me from jump, man. Nigga, it's been emotional. It's been deep. You feel me? Verse 38. And I beheld with Urim that after speaking all these things, a bar saw that the people were overcome with the joy of this knowledge. And they all sat quietly for a good while. And he prayed for them. And I'm gonna pray for y'all when we done too, man. I'm gonna pray for y'all, man. Cause this is deep. Y'all pray for me. We just got we just got some juice. We just got the juice. That 100 percent natural juice. No filter. No preservatives or additives. The way the correct the father created that juice. We just got it, man. With this living water, man. We are man, we are not thirsty. You did. Mm. Let me start verse 38 over again, y'all. We'll get through this, man. We're almost done. And I beheld with Urim that after speaking all these things, Abara saw that the people 
were overcome with the joy of this knowledge and they all sat quietly for a good while and he prayed for them and he left all from speaking and after their ingathering was over all the people went their ways but Abara and Loki remained at the pool of heaven I beheld that Abara hunted and put by provisions and by and by Shamar came to him at her old age to inquire of him many things and she was interested to learn more about his experience with Mozart Mm. Y'all, Shamar, Shamar wanted to know all the business, right? Remember, her and her husband then crossed over to where Mosa appeared to them. And when he appeared, he opened up a vision to Shamar, showing her her son's creative purpose. Man, Shamar was and is a powerful sister. Con? Her, and ladies, she was a teacher. So she was definitely a student first. Peep Gay was watching. Let's keep reading. And he sat with her and said, the reasons why the seven qualities of spirit can allow one to cross over is because of the gentle nature of our Savior. And he explained the seven qualities of spirit to her so she could understand the personality of most of the land. Man, hold up. The bar is about to give Samar a deeper teaching, right? Let's go. Let's go. Y'all y'all see Samar? She was diligently seeking. You see that? Oh, she just got all that heavy stuff we got, but she come back. Like, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm gonna stay. Yeah, we, I'm gonna stay late. I know everybody left. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna stay late. And she was old. She wasn't no young woman. She was old, right? We'll stay late with her, right? We'll, we'll stay late with her, right? Verse 40. And he said, because Mozart is so gentle and unobtrusive, and because his love is so tender, he will not assert himself to impose on others. So if you do not come before him feeling that which allows him to feel free, and you fully welcome him, he will withhold for he is living approval. Mm. You see what he said? He will, not, he will not assert himself to impose and on others. So if you do not come before him feeling that which allows him to feel free, that you fully welcome him, he will withhold for he is living approval. Man, it's all about feelings. Mosa is living reproval. Let's keep reading. And he will thus feel inhibited in his relationship with you. And it is the same with the angels of heaven. Because And because of this, if you do not come before him in deep humility, he will feel your hesitancy. His hesitancy. He will feel your hesitancy to be vulnerable to him. And he will withhold himself in that which he would say to you out of respect for you because he does not want to intrude upon you. Y'all hear that? Mosa loves those who love him. When we love somebody, we accept their way. If we deny reproval, then we deny the Messiah. Precept. Matthew 10. We're going to start at verse 33. Huh? Watch this. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Huh? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Hmm. Moses said he came to bring reproval, fam. And if we deny that reproval in the temporal world, he has to deny us in the spiritual world to come. But let's get another precept. Huh? We're going to get another precept. We're going to go. We're going to stay in the Bible. Let's go in the Bible with Christ telling us his character. Right. This is Christ talking to us. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Matthew chapter 11, verse 21, 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. It's a must we understand that Messiah will not force us. Huh? Back to Grandmother's chapter 8, verse 41. Let's read that. And if you do not speak or think to him all during your waking hours, as you would with any friend with whom you walk in the way, he will feel that you are busy. And he will be bothering you or keeping you from an important task. Moses is, 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 is going to respect our time. You see that? Huh? He ain't going to force us to listen. He ain't going to force us to acknowledge him. He's going to respect our time. You did. Man, yo. When I read these things, I'm like, you know, they go, it's too much time. It's too much time to pass in a day. That, um, man, I ain't even thinking about them. It, it ain't even, uh, intentional. Like when I'm hearing this, it's saying all throughout the day. Yo, I'm going to cross over. You hear me? So that means I'm feeling away right now because I, I walk in the store. 
You dig? And I come out, you know, I ain't, I ain't acknowledge him in the store the whole time. I'm thinking about all the stuff I need to get. When every little thing I'm doing, I need to acknowledge Mozart. That's what he's saying. That's how we protect ourselves. That's how we be warriors. Warriors in Christ. Huh? Man. Man, hold up. Verse 42, let's keep going. And again, if you come to him full of self-consciousness and you are aware of yourself concerning how you would appear to others to be thus addressing him and in your mind receive honor for doing so, he will not want to participate with you in your sin of seeking self-glory. That scripture too. Yeah, that scripture. Man, uh, shout out to Barbara. He was saying these before there was a Bible. Before Matthew, before Christ came in the flesh, he was saying this way back. Because he had a relationship with Christ. That's why. Hmm? Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read 5 and 6, verses 5 and 6. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Let's read. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. As the hypocrites are For they love to pray standing in the synagogues And in the corners of the streets That they may be seen of men Verily I say unto you They have their reward mm. <laughs> But thou When thou prayest Enter into thy closet And when thou hast shut thy door Pray to thy father which is in secret And thy father which seeth in secret Shall reward thee openly Oh man, hold up Everything a bar is teaching We find in the Bible Hmm The only difference is that these these books of remembrances Are telling us why we're doing it <laughs> Back to grandmothers Chapter 8 verse 43 yo. Chapter 8 verse 43 And grandmothers The book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers That's the book we in today Huh Let's keep going And if you do not hold that he commonly shares emotions with you he will be hesitant because he will worry his expression of emotion will not be acceptable to you or cause you undue concern mm, mm, mm. he taught me what that feels like today I understand I understand I understand I've been putting I've been working on this for the last few days you know what I'm saying and um it took me a little bit longer to put this one together, man, because I was really looking at each one. I always look at each one, but, you know, he wanted me to see. He wanted me to understand. And certain of these, you know, I'm not the best at it. You dig what I'm saying? So I had to, um, I've been working on it all week. You know what I'm saying? And that one about sharing our emotions with him. You know what I'm saying? Well, we've been taught as men, especially uh, Israelite men, to cut off our emotions, yo. To, um, to not express our emotions, right? And even when one say, oh no, y'all be killing yourselves. Y'all men don't express yourself. But you know, when we do, we, we get towed down for it. You know what I'm saying? So I've been really looking at myself, you know what I'm saying? And try to, it ain't do, and, and it ain't no big deal, brethren. It ain't no big deal. It's a big deal. I'm not saying it's nothing, but I'm saying it's not hard to do. You dig? It's just really what it said when we was at that particular um, at that particular quality of the spirit when it's talking about sharing our emotions with Mosa. The first thing it told you to do is to acknowledge your emotions. It, it, it's, it's, it's a necessity that we understand how we're feeling all the time, right? And then with that, you can share it with, with Mosa. You can understand that Mosa feels that way as well, right? And then, man, when you do that, man, he, man, you, like I said earlier, you, you, you link with most in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you're sharing with him how you feel. And so now, you know, when, you know, when homies, I know women know better than um, Bredger, but Bredger, we know too, when you got a partner where you can just tell them things, you can talk to them, you know what I'm saying? That's just, you usually open up, you know what I'm saying? And that's what Mosa wants to do with us. He wants us to share our emotion with him and he will open up. He ain't shy. He's just very respectful. You understand? He is very respectful. And, you know, I ain't never thought about that. I've read this before, but 
There's seven of them. So I was more focused the first time I read this, first couple times, I was more focused on the first two, you know, walking around and talking with him and acknowledging that he's here and with me all the time. You understand? And so, you know, yo, man, like I said, we need to go through this stuff often. You understand? We need to go through this stuff often and, uh, and really be making sure we always walking in it. Con, let's knock this off, man. It's a, it's an amazing lesson, man. Uh, let's see. All right, that was verse 43. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, though, he wants to be treated just like we would a friend. And when we do that, it opens up. It just opens up. We'll get a precept, though. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Let's read that. And a man that hath friends... Watch this. And a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You see that? If we want to be companions with most of we, we must we gotta show ourselves friendly. We gotta be a friend. You dig? Not just talk about it, but treat them like we would treat a friend for real. You dig? You ain't gonna have a friend that, you know, it's just one way. It's just one sided. We talking about you my best friend. But you know, you want him to tell you his innermost feelings, but you don't tell him here. You don't tell him yours. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. It's, it's, you know, it ain't something that you even supposed to think about it because then it get weird and strange. Man, what are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I don't want to act like I'm begging you for your friendship, right? So he'll be quiet and just be the best friend you can ever have. Just listen to you. Huh? And still love you and just listen to you, man. Most is amazing, yo. Cause you know another brother gonna start calling you, not gonna fool with you no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's keep going, man. Wow. I'm gonna read that precept again. A man that has friends. This is Proverbs 18, verse 24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks it closer than a brother. That's Mozart, man. Hmm? gotta show ourselves friendly to him and he's with us all day every day and we just ignore him yo huh we share emotions with our friends huh. we, don't, we, we share emotions with people that we shouldn't probably even be sharing emotions with for real you hear me you know, telling people things that we shouldn't even talk to when we got Mozart right here he he gonna be loyal he ain't gonna go run his mouth he going to give you solid advice. If you don't want to hear nothing, he going to be quiet. <laughs> Come on, you know all them feelings we be feeling as human beings. I just want to uh, I just want to vent right now and rep like, oh, big homie, don't, I don't even really need you to say nothing. Just hear me out. Right? Mostly, you don't even got to tell most of that. He know what it is. He know your insides. Con, man, he is the best friend anybody could have. And we ignore him. Man, sorry. Sorry, Mosa. That's amazing. Why would we treat him different than people don't, that don't even deserve what he deserves? But we treat him worse. And that's a that's a bad human quality that we have. Not everybody. I'm, I'm just speaking in general. Especially in um, Babylon here in America. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll have someone that's a, a, a righteous person, a good person. We know that person ain't going to argue with you. You know what I'm saying? We, or with us. We know he ain't going to he or she ain't going to be combative with us. That'd be the one we want to talk recklessly to. But then the one that that um that will talk bad to us, that will mistreat us, we're going to be real cautious with them and really concern ourselves with their feelings. Well, we should concern ourselves with everybody's feelings, but especially the one that treat things about ours. Them who we should put up and raise up. Right? And so if we say we believe in Christ, right, them, that's who we should be working on our relationship for real with. So this is an amazing discussion we have in today, reading today that Abar has given us. And now we get to see that it's a deeper detail. He's given Shamar. Okay? Let's go back to grandmother chapter eight, verse 44. Let's keep reading. And if you do not love repentance, listen to this. And if you do not love repentance and ardently seek approval to welcome it wherever you find it. He would not want to impart to you instruction or reproval that would carry with it an obvious need for you to change for him. Let's look up ardently real quick, right? Let's look up ardently. Ardently. It's uh, enthusiastically or passionately, right? 
And if and if you do not love repentance and passionately seek reproval, <laughs> you see that? To welcome it wherever you find it, he will not want to impart to you instruction or reproval that would carry with it an obvious need for you to change for him. He live in water. He can't help it. But you know what? He is very aware. Moses is very aware. He like, he knows when we ain't about to accept it. He knows when it's going to bother us, when we're going to turn from righteousness. So he ain't even going, you know, he ain't going to even give you something that he knows you need. He ain't going to give me something that he knows I need lest I be passionately looking for that reproval. Right? He knows I look at my son. He wants to know what's wrong. He wants to hear. He don't, he's at this point where he don't care if I'm gonna tell him that he's hundred percent wrong. He wants to hear it right now. He's gonna give it to you, and he's gonna give it to you in a way that you can receive it, where you're not gonna feel like inch high profit eye, huh? No, you're gonna feel like you can be a bigger man because of the stuff that he gave you, a stronger woman, right? Oh, praise him, man. He is the living water, living reproval. Abara said earlier, right? To seek moats is to seek reproval, right? That's what it's saying. When you, you're, if you're really seeking him, you're looking for his correction. That is love, huh? The, 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 he chastised those he loves. So you look for his love, right? And then when you find his love, right, you love him back by changing. You see? You got to love him by looking for his love. That's love. Then when you look for his love, he's going to give you love by giving you approval. That's love. And then when he gives you that love, you get a love back by changing. There's all this love going on. That's why that's he loves everybody. But he's able to further love us when we love him first. He can't give us the love of approval unless we want the love of seeking him. We, unless we have the love of seeking him. That's deep. It's deep. To accept Moses to love repentance, yo. Huh? Now let's read the scripture. Let's go to the scripture. We're going to John chapter 1, verse 12. Huh? John chapter 1, verse 12. Let's read that. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You did? To those that received him. You feel me? When they received him, they received his reproval and they made changes in their life. Huh? Which made them sons of God. <laughs> what? Made them sons of God. He gave them power. He empowered them through repentance. Because they repented. They paid him with repentance and spiritual currency. Huh? No, he don't. He ain't saying that you got to pay him anything. It's just how that. It, that's how things go. It's business. It's business. We we we. Hey, marriage is business. It is. It, we got roles. It's business. Think about it. Everyone got a role. We run in the business. I'm just saying though. Hmm. Yeah. Let's keep going. We we'll go back to grandmother chapter eight verse forty five. Let's keep reading. And if all your exchange with him are casual, listen, and never formal, your friendship will be superficial. Look at that. And he will not be able to feel that you two share profound respect for each other. See, casual is cool. You know, shooting the breeze as partners, you know, leaning on him all the time. But that formal, it ain't got real. <laughs> and that formal, this is a real discussion. We got, we making plans. We got things to do in the spirit. We need to be connected. We need to feel each other. We need to respect each other. Huh? Huh? Hey, y'all ever been on a team, of a sports team? I'm talking about bridging, mostly bridging on some sisters too. That was good. Right? I need, I need, everybody might not have expect, um, felt this, so um, I just probably not a good example because probably everyone can't relate but this will pop in my mind right now you know what i'm saying it's like have you ever been on a sports team like in high school and middle school or whatever and you were good you were real good and then but you also been on a, a, a team that y'all was trash <laughs> on that team where y'all was good practice wasn't no game it was formal baby we serious it's big business we got championships on the line huh 
And that team that was garbage, you got folks daydreaming, you know what I'm saying, laughing, telling jokes on the side, <laughs> running the wrong way on the play. Huh? That's what the formal thing is. That they was over there casual. You know what I'm saying? We was over here casual. We weren't winning no championships. Huh? It was superficial. Practice was superficial. We just going through the motions. Everybody ready to go home. But when you was on that championship team, on that team that was good, that had a good chance, everything mattered. Huh? Everybody was invigorated. Coach coming up with new stuff that he can try, thinking about his players all the time. Players coming through. I what I wonder what coach got for me. Man, I, I wanna make I wanna make coach happy. Oh man, I let my teammates down. See, it was a whole different mindset when it was formal. It didn't mean that we weren't casual together after the game, before practice and all that. We were friends. We were cool. You got to have some kind of camaraderie to be champions. Right? But we all understood when it got real. It got real. Or we weren't going to win no championship. Con, you don't want no superficial relationship with us because, this man, this is a, we in war. I told y'all, we warriors in Christ. Hmm? He building up spiritual warriors. It can't just be casual. It's time we got to go into the drawing room, man, and put it together, come with a plan. And he got the plan. He got the strategy. He just need us in the right place to receive it so we can go out there and do it. He the coach. Man. Marie 45 again. And if all your exchange with him are casual and never formal, your friendship will be superficial and he will not be able to feel that. You two share profound respect for each other, man. You look at your teammates after y'all done won the championship, man. You got holding that trophy. You respect them cats, man. You look around and respect them. When we got we got busy, man. You don't gotta be sports. It could be, you know, uh, a debate team. You dig? Chess team. Whatever team. You got people that you rely on. Y'all been there at work. You got a team of people you rely on at the end of the quarter. You look at what you looking at people. You respect it. Y'all came to work and handle your business. Manager respects the employees. The employees respect the manager because everybody was fighting for the same common goal. And wasn't nobody just playing. It wasn't, it wasn't always just casual. Sometimes it gets real. Huh? The Bible doesn't teach us about a form of relationship with most of y'all. We just get examples. Right? So I'm going to try to go find some. Uh, I'm going to get some precepts like Jacob's Ladder. Right? That was a formal approach. Go read that when y'all get a chance, right? Remember Elijah and the prophets of Baal? That was a formal approach. He went out there trying to find the Lord. Man, he looking at the tornado go by. He was trying. He was trying to figure it out. He pondered and came with a plan. Hmm. I done mixed up the accounts in the Bible. <laughs> I done mixed up the account with the account of Book of Remembrance of Moses. I mean, Book of Remembrance uh, 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 of uh, Achi. Right in the Bible, though, you know, he went up, he had to come with a plan as well, too, and went over there and carried it out. But then after that, you remember, um, uh, Jezebel was coming to get him, so he had to go over there and seek the Lord again, right? He had to come, he had to formally go out to the Lord and formally get to a place where he come with a plan. That when the Lord said, I forget how many number they ain't bowed to Baal like him, he wasn't by himself. The Lord had to, he had to go seek the Lord and get understanding because he was scared. You remember in the Bible, he was scared, so he went and had a formal relationship with Mosa. Mosa empowered him. Con, y'all remember that? And then um, Enoch in every division, right? Remember I, my car? So when we go into the book, remember, it's a little bit more clear, right? Right, for example, my car approached Mosa when he went up the top of Qatar, Mount Qatar. Before that, Mosa was telling him the things he wanted to do. They had a, a, a formal relationship and a plan for things to be done that was going to affect time, Right? affect generations as did in the hall you know what i'm saying he went formally went up there right enoch at every division he did it was formal then enoch taught abiathar and then abiathar made a formal approach we went back into that today right yasakad and kav at the altar of ariel made a formal approach they didn't even know what they were doing they were just being obedient hmm? when he said i can't eat with you no more because you're not in eating so you're gonna have to go to the altar eat yeah, it was formal. They were formally going to go commune with, the, with their Lord and Savior, with their father, with Mozart, Hamashiach. Huh? 
Let's keep reading verse 46. And lastly, the four stations of purification put you and him together on the same pathway with the angels in heaven. And he can rely on you to comfort him or come to his aid in the time of his need. Man, dealing with the first four stations, men, we are really doing the work now, man. When you're in there, when you when you dealing with the four, the four you're really there. We start becoming reliable in, in the eyes of Moses. That might be the better way to put that. Because we're doing the work already. Hmm. But man, when you start dealing with the four station, man, that's something that you do. Hmm. Yeah, man. You're, yeah, man. <laughs> Respect. You really getting it in then. Moses really trusts you. He relies on you. He has faith in you. Huh? Verse 47. And know that addressing all these things continually and diligently, this all the seven qualities uh, of spirit. And know that addressing all these things continually and diligently in your daily walk prepares the two of you to be joined together in ways that are natural and the creative way. Huh? And according to the desires of Anoki said for you both And you and Moza can rest together from the many cares and labors you share And you will be a home for him to come to when he needs a friend And your place of abode and your marriage and family will be a place of retreat for him To find comfort and delight when he is weary And I say to you that these seven qualities of spirit are very real to him And you can accomplish them and he needs those who love him enough to see to it to see to the diligence it takes to cross over hmm. man hold up yeah crossing over will have us <laughs> coasting through those first three stations in the afterlife yeah it will but when we move in a way that causes us to cross over we are gonna be doing something that that's way more important than that that at the more we're obedient, the more we know the Father will understand. Because I don't think we truly understand. Not all of us like we should. But when we move in a way that causes us to cross over, we are then doing a great service for Mozart, yo. Hmm. And the more we sell out to Mozart, the more he opens our heart cells feelings to his feelings. And our compassion for him continues to grow. And we'll really understand why we should always be in this state of relaying and re rely relying and talking and being relating with him most of the land but we got to make sure that that's what we want first <laughs> yeah we got to make sure that's what we want it's easy to say hmm? and how do we make sure we know that's what we want and we show that's what we want by diligently walking in these seven qualities of spirit yo Verse 48. And after I beheld the teachings of this man Abara, my heart was overcome with gratitude towards the Lord for allowing these profound teachings to come to us. And I wept before the scribes. And Rashuya was indeed a man of God when he established formal learning upon the earth so we could pursue truth and light. That's what Rashuya did with the pool of heaven. He got a place where we can come learn, learn from the ancients, learn from the elders, learn from the people before us, learn from the people that's with us that just know more than us, learn from different people's experiences. Learning, learning is very important. They trying to dumb us down in society. <laughs> the Lord taught us to want to learn, right? Verse 49, and I know that Enoch named one of the orders of service after this little brother, Abara. <laughs> and they are called the men of Abara. And it, and it is their vision of creative purpose to seek to gain the ability to cross over so they can demonstrate with their lives who Moza is and what he is doing and also to anticipate the life to come. So one can enter it prepared in their salvation and it seems very fitting to me that the pool of heaven was the first place where learning was established upon the earth for the living water flows in us <laughs> oh praises yo a bar done laced our boots up tonight <laughs> and that's where we stopping fam i know man i appreciate y'all patience yo i appreciate 
That le- <laughs> I don't study that lesson enough, yo. I got to read that more. That's like Ciroc and Apocrypha. I don't know. Before I knew these books, remember, so that Ciroc was something I always say. I don't read this enough. Every time I go reading it, I'm like, oh, man, I ain't read this for, oh, man, for too long. Right? Man. That's like, yeah, that we should read that through at least once a month, at least. Really a lot more than that. <laughs> so much meeting there, man. The seven qualities of spirit. Should be everybody's personal vision to accomplish. It is. It's our vision. To walk in those seven qualities is how we walk with the fruits of the spirit. We rolling, ain't we? We rolling, man. The Lord God, He's showing it, man. Man, y'all mash on the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you get to do so. Hit the bell so you're notified every time we drop something. No, man. Man, in these last three episodes, we can see why. We should read these quality spirit a lot more than once a month until we have to dip them down and part of our routine. But we can see why Abara was so well respected by his older brother, <laughs> who was the great Enoch. Man, Abara was great. Mm, mm, mm. Our children, man, as soon as they're old enough, we got we gotta we need to we, we need to help them to understand. They gotta know these seven qualities just for their future, right? You know how strong their relationship with the most high will be when they get when they get of age, when they've been doing this for years? Semi Haza is truly in trouble, family. Father and brought this to the people, man. Mm. Go check out go check out the playlist, family. Uh Clear Eyes No Visine and catch up with it, yo. The link to the uh, books are in the description. You feel me? If the link ain't working, because I think I've seen someone say the links weren't working, you can go to brotherhoodofchristchurch.org. Brotherhoodofchristchurch.org. That's where all the books is and the PDFs. That's, I try to link the link there, but I ain't no computer wizard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't no wizard, period, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can get these books there, hard copies and PDFs. As always, man, I pray this message was for somebody. I praise the Kahi, which is the Holy Spirit. The Ruach Kadash, which gives us all come away. Huh? Our praises to Anoki said that's our praises to the great I am loving kindness. Ahaya Ki said. <laughs> our praises to most of the land. That's our savior. Yash. Mm, mm, mm. Remember, family, we gotta love the most high with all our mind, all our heart, and all our might. And to love our brothers and sisters like the most high loves them. See them like the father sees them. And hear them like the Father hears them. Feel for them like the Father feels for them. It's your boy, PZ. Real. Shoot him. Let go.
Forget. 